It's a beautiful Chicago day out there, man. Ooh. <laughs> man. You just bring the rain. I bring something. <laughs> bring. I bring. Really does feel like every time you'll come out here, you're starting. <sighs> yeah. It's just you. It's just like I'm, there's no, uh, look. Man, you sound like my wife. It's good. I mean, that's, I got the comment. Well, there you go. I shouldn't have a comment either on that. I hope the camera was rolling for that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's been a part of the season, right, where Russ was uh, unfortunately not able to play. And then, you know, the way it worked out last week, and I'm sure you guys are sick of my stock answer, but the coverage just does dictate. Um, early in the game, there was a chance um, on the second play of the game. And unfortunately, uh, the way the play worked out, uh, Russ wasn't able to get the ball and, and Matt wasn't able to get the ball off. And we took an, an unfortunate sack there. Um, but, you know, typically how the games play out, um, it's our intention to, like I said before, spread the ball out uh, and go where the, the coverage dictates it. And, you know, just happened last game that it didn't uh, dictate as much to go to Russ there. It's hard to how he playing. His numbers look solid, but, you know, I know y'all drill down past those numbers. Yeah, again, I think it goes for us, and you know, from a coaching standpoint and for me personally, it's how you impact the game. And, again, some of that shows up in the stat line which I think is the low hanging fruit to see if guys, how they're performing. But the reality is, you know, we ask a lot of the position groups to do a lot of different things that obviously don't show up in the stat line. And if it's Tajay, if it's OZ, if it's CB, if it's Frank Darby, um, if it's Russ, guys that are out there, the reality is uh, there's a twofold, right? You have to win on your route, the ball doesn't always go to you, but you're always measured, hey, did you do your job? The other part is obviously the run game. And so when you're in there, are you making sure that your guy's not the one making the impact play or the tackle? And are you doing what you're supposed to do? So when it comes to not just Taj, but all those guys at the receiving core, you know, it's, we measure them how they impact the game, not just if the targets go to them or if they catch the ball that way. Okay, Tiny and Mark, uh, uh, Falcons PR gave us a good stat this week about uh, the group having uh, the most receiving yards as a group. Could y'all move more work over to them to help uh, in the passing attack? Are you saying the tight ends? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I think what the running joke a little bit is uh, Lee Smith having a career resurgence. Yeah. Yeah. There, there we go. Great career there. Um, but, yeah, again, like I said, it's you've got Kyle, you've got Hayden, you've got Lee. Uh, those guys all do different things for us. Um, they're able to – to function in the pass game and do and, and cause defenses at least to think about different things than which they can do. And again, it's it's Matt's job to go back there, read the coverage, and then where the ball goes, the ball goes. But you know, again, they've all done a good job of when the ball is coming their way uh, to catch it and then make something happen after. And then when it doesn't come their way, still winning on their routes or trying to win on their routes to continue to put that on film so that when the quarterbacks go and watch the film and they see where the ball goes, you know, we tell those guys, hey, you know, the ball went there, no doubt, but look how these routes have won in the backside or whatever, and you kind of put that in your memory bank in case you have to go back to that play. How much, how, is, how, how much, is, how much was Russ maybe limited by the groin injury on Sunday? Because we saw him in week two, you know, play through really what two, you know, guys yeah. get pulled with ankle injuries. How yeah. much did the groin play into all that? That would be an, a question for Russ. I mean, guys speak for themselves. Coach Smith speaks about the injuries. To me, you know, if you're out there, you're giving everything you got. I think I can say this, even though I play quarterback and you don't get hit every day in practice, I think after the first day of practice, everybody's a little banged up. Um, but appreciate anybody who goes out there, uh, tries to give everything they got. Um, you're at this point of the season now, like I've said before, where, you know, guys are fighting through everything. And then it's not just one position group. Um, and you love the fact that guys go out there and they're fighting, they want to be on the field. And if they're on the field, you know, we, the expectations is no different than they have for themselves, go out there and perform at a high level. And you mentioned Frank Darby. What does he need to do to get, and maybe even to an extent Christian Blade, what do they need to do at this point to get in some sort of receiver rotation or in Darby's case, even a receiver rep? Uh, for me, with all those guys, and I know you singled out Frank, again, I think you go to practice, 
you have a pre-practice, a normal practice that you go out there and you're executing your plays. Then you have a post-practice where you're working on stuff individually, potentially. For us, at the end of the day, it's, it's no different than any position group. You want to see, for every guy, Matt Ryan all the way to a, a undrafted rookie, you want to see them go out there every day and try to get better at something. And we try to, specifically when you talk about players, you want them to go out there and work on something that maybe um, they need to improve on and stay strong where you're strong. I think that's the one thing, you know, not to go too much off subject, but when you talk about, and again, I always go back to personal experience for myself, like when you get to the NFL, they're all good players, but you got to the NFL for a reason, right? You probably had one distinct trait that got you here that stood out amongst the rest of the guys in your college class that got you drafted or made a football team in the NFL. I think you got to remember to stay strong where you're strong. So if you're really fast, make sure you're always really fast when it shows up on film. It doesn't mean you don't work on your weaknesses, but I think, you know, I can say for myself, what ended up happening is, you know, I watch Peyton Manning, he's in the division, and all of a sudden I want to be, I want to throw like Peyton Manning. Well, I don't throw like Peyton Manning. A, I'm left-handed. B, he's right-handed. He, his whole mechanics are different. So me to all of a sudden want to be that kind of quarterback, you, you kind of lose yourself sometimes. And so, again, we ask no different than Matt to, to Frank Darby, to anybody else, is come out each day with an improvement. Try to seek it. Get better. And then remember what got you here. So. Is Frank, is, has Frank kind of lost himself? Is that no. Talking? What I'm saying is with guys, that you want these guys to come out and continue to get better and work on what they work on. At the end of the day, you want to see each day a guy coming out and giving you improvement, a guy each day getting better. And I think all those guys have done that. At some point, right, in the NFL season, you're going to have to play different multiple receiver sets, tight end sets, offensive linemen. And so, again, those guys are continuing to improve, and when this is their chance, they'll get a chance to make a play. What do you think you need to see Frank improve on then to get, you know, to maybe get to that point? Just bring this like he's been doing. I think Frank's done a good job of bringing the same attitude, the same energy. Again, there's only so many opportunities. And so when it's your chance, we expect Frank to go out there and perform. So I have, to me, Frank's done everything we've asked and we continue to, to push him and get better. And, and uh, his coaches have done that for him. And when it's Frank's opportunity, I'm sure he'll get a chance to, to make a play for us. Yeah, Hayden, I can just speak to Hayden as a person since I've been here. Hayden's been awesome in terms of his mentality, mindset, uh, how he approaches a game. What I appreciate about Hayden is, you know, he goes in and he plays as hard as he possibly can on game day. Doesn't mean he doesn't do that in practice. I'm saying when that game, when the lights come on, you know, Hayden's going to give you everything he's got. From a coaching standpoint, I mean, again, I think if you polled a bunch of different coaches, I'm sure there's different things that would come up. For me, like a guy who's going out there and literally laying it out there for you, and playing as hard as he can, I mean, that ranks up pretty high for me. And I think Hayden has done that uh, game in, game out, and he's done that in the practice. And we come to expect that from Hayden, which has been awesome. Mr. Felipe, it looked like he was a little more diverse in what he did. Maybe that was just because you put him up there when Ridley came off. I, I don't know. But are you trying to look at different ways to – incorporate him rather than just that wildcat? I mean, yeah, I, th I think for – it's a great question. I think with Felipe, right, it's – we say this to a number of players, you, you want to be, you want to make yourself valuable and impact the game. I mean, I know Felipe is obviously coming and play quarterback from college. And then obviously he's transitioned and he's come here and he's played quarterback in the preseason and then we've moved him around a little bit. Um, what Felipe has done is had a great attitude of coming in here, doing anything that we've asked him to do, run down and practice on a special teams kick or go back and play quarterback. And what he's done is he's had a mindset in which whatever does whatever I need to do to help the team. And so I've got a great appreciation, even though he's a rookie and not, you know, first year in the NFL, he's taken that mindset, which has been awesome. I know that they're different types of players, but do you point him to Taysom Hill and say, as an example of a guy sure. who's got lots of roles sure. and has made it work? I mean, Taysom Hill is such a special yeah. talent. Um, I'm not sure how many guys – and maybe maybe D Lake can answer this through his history of the NFL. I don't know how many guys have been like him, honestly. Um, he's won games with a starting quarterback. He's played. He and last year against uh, in my previous stop, he caught a in cut for a touchdown as a receiver. I mean, so he's what they've been able to do with him and how he's done that role. It's pretty special. I mean, if you can find someone like that, I mean, I'm sure a lot of teams would be uh, pretty excited. But uh, it's hard to compare a guy to Taysom Hill just because of what he's been able to do so far. If you find a 
find yourself in the free agent or draft process looking for guys like that because of him, or is he just so so much? Yeah, I mean, he's been. Like, yeah, right. He's been so unique. I think I'm sure teams are always scouring to look for a potential of that, just because of the the stress it can cause to a defense. You don't know where he's lining up. He can impact the game with the ball in his hand, or he can block, right? And, and probably really good on special teams. Um, and he basically serves a lot of roles, which helps you with roster um, flexibility. Again, I'm sure teams have tried. I just don't know. Like he's basically he's carved out such a niche that you know I give him a ton of credit because he's done it a lot of different ways, and and he's accepted that role and he's done really well in it. Have, you ever done it? have what? Could you have done it? No, <laughs> no. I mean, I, what does he run like four or five or something like that, and can throw the football? And I mean, again. The uh, special, special player. Slash. Yeah. Yeah. Then an old school George Blanton could kick and play quarterback. And he played till what, 45, 46? Something like that? Yeah. Yeah. So you'll say Taysom for another 10 years? Yeah. Like you guys know, what a, what a good player, man. So you grew up in Cleveland. So you saw Pittsburgh, Cleveland. You coached. Bears, Packers, what's your take on Jalen versus uh, Falcons Saints? <laughs> yeah, here, here's what I can tell you about New Orleans. Uh, so all my different stops, player and a coach, I think this is six or seven. I've probably played down there at every different stop. I've got such an appreciation for that atmosphere. Um, regardless of the, the time of year, you know, it's not just cranked up for the playoffs, um, not opening game. You know, not just an, an 8 o'clock kickoff or an, a late afternoon prime time. I mean, they're ready to go. And it's, you know, it's an exciting atmosphere as a visiting team to go into just because, you know, you feel the energy in there. And they do. They're, they're probably as smart as any fan base of knowing when to be loud, um, knowing how it affects the other team's offense. And again, it's, it's just one of those atmospheres where you see it on your schedule each year and you know you're going down there. Not to mention, obviously, Coach Payton, since I've been in the NFL, has done a tremendous job. You know, he's been a head coach for so long and he's won so many different ways, which is a credit to him and all of the assistance he's had through the years. But, I mean, they feed off what they do. They win a lot of games and that crowd's behind them and, and it helps them uh, really create that home field atmosphere that gives an advantage to them. Their, their entire defense is obviously uh, pretty good, but Coach Smith was, was talking about um, uh, DeMario Davis earlier and his ability to diagnose well. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of problems does it pose going up against a player like that who seems to be really hot and playing really confident yeah. with a, a smart guy who can identify what you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, we can speak about him. I will quickly. I mean, not only is he smart, he's physical. I mean, he's, he's the full package of what you're looking for. Um, and that's not just him. I mean, like I said before, it, it feels like even though I haven't been in this division previous to this year, I feel like they've been a division opponent. I think we played them twice last year. We played them, I think, for four straight years or three or four straight years. Um, and I've got nothing but respect for that defense and what they're able to do from a schematic standpoint. Um, they cause a lot of issues. And the way there's pl those players play. I mean, they play fast, physical, smart. Uh, they communicate extremely well. They get into a lot of different looks for the quarterback. Um, again, I can go on and on. Uh, I am a huge fan of, of what Coach Allen does defensively and obviously what they've been able to do over the course of these years and uh, found different ways to win on defense. And it's going to be a challenge for us. I'm just curious. I've never really had a person say that. Is that weird to say you're a fan of a guy who's really trying to scheme to make your life absolutely miserable on yeah, I think, you know, in the NFL, you have an appreciation for people, you know, for what they do, their craft and how they do it. Um, I don't know him personally. Um, I just obviously, like I said, when you play against a guy a number of times, you grow an appreciation um, for how they attack offenses and how they play and how they, have, they instill that mindset for their players. Um, and you can see it. You can see the energy in which those guys play at. Um, they've got really good players. They've got a really good scheme. Uh, that usually is a challenge for an offense, but uh, I think he's done a really good job there. When, when you have a guy like Marshawn Lattimore, is that just Cleveland right there? Do you love? Yeah. Yeah. Ohio yeah. State, too. Yeah, Glenville. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you, talk about you, when you do have a guy like Marshawn Lattimore, how much does that 
make life easier for what you might want to try to do to an opposing offense? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously he's he's been a very good corner for a number of years. Um, not just the Ohio connection there, D-Led, even though we're going to pump that. But, I mean, it's, you know, they again, I feel like I've played against Jenkins for a number of years in Philly and now I'm back in New Orleans again after he was there before. But it's another player. I mean, and you talk about the safeties. and you. T I mean, again, the their, their whole secondary, right? And you talk about the nickel and the, the issues he can cause and, you know, He's a guy who's a great energy guy. He gets in your face, just like the rest of that defense. And again, I think you've got different mi mismatch pieces that cause offenses some issues, and you got to be on top of it, um, either at home or when you go down there, because you got to bring it, because you know they're going to bring it. Gardner Johnson seems to like to, and even at Marshall Lavin the last couple of weeks, seems to like to try to get into. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, do you have to, but for a rookie like Kyle Pitts, who might see one of those two guys on the sure. Do you have to talk to him and say, hey, listen, like, this is this guy's MO. Do not get it. Into yeah, I, I think regardless of the week, we try to make sure that we have a, you know, contain our emotions. Um, it's an emotional game. I don't care how you slice it, dice it. I mean, guys go out there, they need to execute the plan. But the reality is we're all human. There's emotions involved, good and bad. Um, you hope that guys contain their emotions and go out and do their job. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, Again, I think it all is part of their defense. They go out and they play with a tremendous amount of energy. And as an offense, if you don't match their energy, there's going to be issues. Um, and that's why I think they've been so successful on top of scheme and player is how they go out there and their mentality. Anything else? Yeah, could just uh, with them getting back Quan Alexander uh, played a little bit last week yep. from Achilles. What, you know, what does he bring? If they yeah, again, an, an, there, another good. veteran player, great athlete. You know, I think it allows him more flexibility in terms of some of the things that he's done in his past, uh, frees up some other players. Um, and again, it's, you, you bring him into the mix and just a, another player that can, has an edge, can cover, can do different things. And again, it's, our work's cut out for us. Thank you.